the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And they'd like to mention the fact that their product, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. <laughs> Today, your son of Luigi is making the biggest move of his life. Yep, I'm going to remember when I first came to America and the Pasquales started me in antique business. I'm going to heard the great American saying, to be big, you got to think big. Well, that night, I went to sleep thinking about elephants. <laughs> but in the morning, I was still as poor as a mouse. <laughs> then, a little by little, I'm going to start to understand what this saying means. If you want to be big success, you got to work hard and always think up new ways to make money. Like take a Thomas Edison. This great man saw a lot of empty sockets in the ceiling, so he's to go out and invent the electric light. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason I'm going to write all this is because I am realize if I'm going to be big, I'm going to do things instead of awakening. So today, I'm going to make a big move. I'm going to give a deposit on a new store. And uh, tomorrow, I'm uh, going to move all of my antiques out of Pasquale's store into a new place. Oh, I can hardly wait to tell my friends in the night school about the new Luigi Basco. And the Luigi Basco, who's uh, going to be a big American businessman. America, I love you. you like a papa to me. From motion to ocean. Jiminy Luigi, that, that, that sounds wonderful. A new store. Your name up in electric lights. Advertisements in the papers. Luigi, you're really splurging. Splurging? He's exploding. Luigi, <laughs> <laughs> I never thought you got so much push in you. Well, it's your time to figure out. If you think a little, you're going to be little. But if you think a big, then you're going to get the big. Try to new delicatessen, you should. Oh, no, thanks. When you're making a salami sandwich and you think big... Those 20-pound slices could lead to bankruptcy. Hush, <laughs> my Luigi. I'm glad we got one good businessman in our gang. What other improvements are you going to make, Luigi? Well, the main thing is to bring up the sales. This I'm going to do with smart American advertising. Good. Then when the money is coming... I invest in a new store. Then I open up another store. Then another so store. Stop, another... Luigi. You are pushing Marshall Field into Lake Michigan. <laughs> Jiminy, Luigi, where, where did you get all those ideas? Yes. Yeah. Did you suddenly... Good evening, class. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Class, what was all the excitement about when I came into the room? It's Luigi. He's expanding. Expanding? Yeah. In what way? From now on, Miss Spalding, it's Luigi and Roebuck. <laughs> what? Uh, Miss Spalding, Luigi has become a human dynamo, a captain of industry, a force to be reckoned with, who is seeking to broaden his horizons and reach new shores of endeavor. Oh, now you talking about Luigi or launching the Queen Mary? <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose all this makes sense, but I'm afraid I don't understand. Did you come into an inheritance, Mr. Basco? No, Miss Bolling. It's just that I'm suddenly decide to be a big success. And I'm already at a new store with a new location, and I'm going to try out lots of new ideas on how to make money. 
Well, I certainly must give you credit, Mr. Basco. Yeah, but the big ideas he's got, he's going to need that credit. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Basco, what made you suddenly decide to expand your business? Well, Miss Spalding, I'm going to tell you. I did a little figuring. We're living now in a boom of time. With an inflation, lots of money is going around. And if you read the stock market, you see how taxes are going up, the real estate is climbing up, and this is the time to use up for your money in the business. Thank you, Bernard Bosco Barrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking, Luigi. I only wish that I had the courage to do with my delicatessen what you are doing with the antique shop. Well, a sure antique shop, a delicatessen, it's not make any difference. Oh, excuse me, Miss Spalding. I'm going to go back to my store. Moving the manager coming to move me out. Well, I thank think... you. Well, Himmel, suddenly I feel like I was visited by a rich relative. <laughs> Olsen, what do you think about Luigi changing stores so suddenly? Sure, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Schultz, what do you think? Ach, it's got me a little for shimmer, too. <laughs> now, I'm worried about that crazy way that that little Wiener schnitzel is talking. I think he's getting a little too sure of himself. Funny thing. I was thinking the same thing. I wonder if he's going to change. Now, look, fellas, Luigi is not the type to forget his old friends. I believe me, he's as loyal as a cooker spaniel. Joe, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, Schultz. Ambition does strange things sometimes to people. I wonder what Pasquale will say about Luigi's moving up. I'll bet he hits the ceiling. Hits the ceiling? Pasquale will go right through the ceiling into the stratosphere and become another planet. <laughs> Luigi, if you leave the antique shop, it's going to be over your dead body. Pasquale, stop waving your hands and my mind is a matter. Well, unmake it. Look, Mr. Big Business, I brought you over from Italy. I set you up for the antique shop right next door to me. And why do you suppose? Well, because you got a big heart. No, because I got a big daughter. <laughs> and you know the reason all the time. Yeah, but Pasquale, please don't make things so hard for me. I'm going to make myself a big success. All a... right, to Luigi, go, but I warn you, terrible things is going to happen. To me? Yes, terrible things? to you. Soon as you change the locations, the FBI right away puts your name in the AMA Journal. <laughs> AMA? <laughs> what the kind of this is done for? Aliens moving around. <laughs> Pasquale, stop it. You can't scare me no more with those silly stories. Luigi, tell me the real reason why you suddenly decided to move away. Well, Pasquale, is, is it because I'm going to find out the big American secret of how to become rich? To be big, you got to think big. That's what I say. And believe me, Luigi, once you marry Rosa, you think in the biggest any man can think. <laughs> but, Pasquale, that's not the big I'm thinking about. Oh, it's, it's hard to explain to you, but... But I take you spaghetti place. Same location, all the ways with the same customers. You never made a million dollars. And you know why? Sure I know why. So those are free breadsticks I give out. <laughs> no, but no, it's because you don't think a big. You ain't what's called a hep. Hep? Yeah, that's a slang I'm a learner, Pasquale. It means you ain't on a ball or you ain't a cooking. If I ain't a cook, and a lot of people in this neighborhood have been eating raw meatballs for 27 years. <laughs> Luigi, stop with this crazy slang of talk. You sound like you fell down and broke your English. That's right, I'm a pretty busy now. Time is the money, but I'm going to take a one minute off to explain it to you. That's very nice of you, Luigi. I appreciate it. Have a cigarette, the Pasquale? Sure. Hey, since when you took up a smoking? Since this morning, and maybe next week, I'm going to start on a cigars like a real American, a big business man. <laughs> Cigarettes, cigars, only last week, your biggest pleasure was a chocolate a popsicle. <laughs> All right, Pasquale, time is a passing. The moving the truck is going to leave my store pretty soon. I'm going to make it this quick, so listen. Go ahead, I'm listening. All right. America is got the boom at times now, right? Uh -huh, it's a boom. So everything is in a flash. Follow me, my friend. I'm a right behind. 
<laughs> Inflation means lots of dollars are going out. The money is being spent, the merchandise is moving fast, and... Follow me? What am I, a motorcycle, a cop? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Big Business Man, teach me some more. Well, that's it, the Pasquale is no more. Time awaits for nobody. American business is a fast, and if you want to be on the top, you got to think a big. All right, I'm thinking a big. I'm thinking what a big dope I was to bring you from Italy. I'd have been better off with the import of can of sardines. <laughs> well, that's the life of Pasquale. Now, if you excuse me, I see the moving truck is ready to leave my store now. No, so... no, Luigi, please. Don't go. <laughs> Pasquale, don't talk like a big baby. But I, I'm going to miss you, Luigi, and... Uh, and Rosso. No, no, worry, Pasquale. I'm going to come and see you sometime. Luigi, stay. Stay here. I cut you rent in a half. A full 25%. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, little cabbage pussy? Well, Pasquale, I'm, I'm in need of the location. All right, look, I'll let you live rent free. Just stay. What do you say, Luigi? No, huh? i got to do something. i better call in Rosso. Rosso! Rosso! Rosa! You call me Papa! <laughs> Rosa, Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> Rosa, I tried, but it's no use. He's still going. <laughs> Luigi, if you got a half a heart in your stomach, you won't go and leave. <laughs> You don't know Rosa. Once she feels bad, she eats it to forget. And in six weeks, she's liable to forget herself into 400 pounds. <laughs> well, Pascal, it's no use. My mind is a matter. Rosa, stop him. Should I fall on him, Papa? No. <laughs> Ready to go, Pascal. All right, Mr. Moving Man. Well, uh, goodbye, Pasquale. Rosa. Oh! <laughs> Don't cry, my baby. Well, Luigi, if you got to go, then go quick. That's right. You always got to act quick in America. Come on, Pastor. We're shoving off. I'm shoving off with you, Mr. Moving Man. Well, I'm going to go now. You want to shake hands and wish me luck, Pastor? All right. <laughs> well, goodbye, Pastor. Rosa. Goodbye, neighborhood. Don't worry. I'm coming to see you sometime, but I'm going to come back when I'm a big sucker Bastards are going to be big man in there. Robert, he's gone? Yes. Ah! <laughs> 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 Robert, you want my handkerchief to blow your nose? Of course not. What do you think I am, old lady? <laughs> Besides, I got my own handkerchief. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that'll make your daily work seem easier and pleasanter. From time to time, while you're working, chew a stick of refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. You see, friends, having a smooth piece of gum in your mouth to chew on helps you feel good. The pleasant chewing goes right along with whatever you're doing, helps reduce tension, and gives you a feeling of satisfaction. Then, too, chewing Wrigley's Spearmint freshens your taste and helps keep your mouth and throat moist and comfortable. As a result, you just naturally feel better and work better. So enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint gum while you work. See how it makes your job seem easier and pleasanter, just as it does for millions of people. Now, let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, my biggest dream is to come true. It's one a week since I'm opened up my antique shop in a new location, and already I'm making a lot of money. I'm got a two telephones all day. My cash registers are ringing like a fire alarm box, and today I'm going to sell my first $50 bill. Believe me, Mamma Mia, you silly say, S. Grant was a more surprised to see me than I was to see him. <laughs> and also, I'm doing so much business, I'm going to hire myself a sales girl, Miss Aubrey. 
Mamma mia, you should see the bigger business a man in his new start. He ain't not going to believe it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that colonial spinning wheel will be delivered this afternoon. Oh, Miss Aubrey, I'm, I'm about to answer the phone. Never mind, I've got it. When is it going to be my turn? <laughs> Hello, Basco's Antique Shop. Miss Aubrey speaking. A Lincoln mug? Oh, yes, we have a very fine one. Oh, please, please, Miss Aubrey. If it's about Lincoln, I'm going to talk. Fine, you come on in any time. Now, I'm asking you a dozen of times, Miss Aubrey, if it's about the Lincoln or Washington Jefferson, then I'm going to talk. That's uh, my, my bigger pleasure. But, Mr. Basco, I'm doing such excellent business for you. Yeah, but I'm not care. I'm going to be barber, shoemaker, grocery man, a stocker, broker, anything, if I'm only want to make a business. But I'm an antique business because... I'm a love America and all the American things. Mr. Basco, on the one hand, you talk about making lots of money, being a success, and then you talk as though you don't care. Excuse me if I'm confused. Well, all right, then I'm going to ask you. You should excuse me, too. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, those will have to wait until Saturday for delivery, though. We're very rushed. Oh, goodness, we're certainly being discovered, Mr. Basco. Oh, goodness, yes. Uh, are you sure a fellow named Pasquale is not calling me? No. Uh, have you hired that delivery boy yet? No, not yet. Uh, Schultz, Olsen, Horowitz, Miss Spalding. Nobody is called by that name? No. Now, have you found a location for another store? No. Uh, you sure it was in a Schultz? Uh, I'm thought that for sure he would have come. Oh, uh... Wait a minute. Is he a tall, thin man, and does he laugh all the time? Yeah, and after he's laughed, he's always saying, Oh, my rheumatism is a killing of me. <laughs> That's him. He was in yesterday while you were out facing the ad. Schultz? Oh, Schultz wasn't here, mm -hmm. huh? How did he look? What did he say? Oh, well, and I told him I worked here for you and that you were hiring another delivery boy and adding a new story. He said, uh, that little Wiener schnitzel, uh -huh. he's discovering more in America than Columbus. Oh, it's a Schultz. It's a Schultz. <laughs> Well, tonight I'm going to my night school. I had no chance to see my other friends. Well, evidently you had no chance to even see your mail either. I wanted to show you this letter from your school. From uh, my school? What's to happen? Oh, they must have been mad because I'm, I'm no camera for so long. Well, let me see now. Office of the principal. Dear Mr. Basco, we received your notice of change of address. And a right to inform you that you are now living in different school school district. Kindly report to your new school at... Uh... Oh, Mamma Mia, that's no good. Is something wrong, Mr. Basco? Everything is wrong. They're departing me from my own school. <laughs> Mamma Mia, I'm going to do something. Miss Aubrey, quick, call up Pasquale. His number is uh, uh, Central 788-897. And find out if my old stories are entered out yet. Well, uh, all right, Mr. Basco. Yeah, but uh, quick, I'm... I'm... I'm going to get back to the old neighborhood. Call up Pasquale and ask him, but don't tell him who's you calling for. He's a mad enemy. Uh -huh. Hello, Pasquale. It's a spaghetti palace. All you can eat for all you can pay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pasquale, I understand you have a vacant store for... Too rent. late. Too late. It's already rented out to oh. Joe's barber shop. He's going to open up the soda. Goodbye. I heard them... Mamma mia, what, what am I going to do? Mr. Basco, aren't you acting too hasty? After all, one night school is pretty much like any other. No, no, I'm, I'm used to those friends and the teaching and that a night school. Mr. And... Basco, does it have to be a night school? Sure, everything I'm learning in America, I'm learning in the dark. <laughs> Miss Aubrey, watch the story. I'm going to talk to Miss Balding right now and make her take me back. Miss Spalding has left the door open. I'm, I'm going to listen. All right, class. I'll call the roll. Mr. Harwood? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Here. Well, Mr. Schultz, you've been answering to your name for a whole week now without trying to be funny. It shows you're beginning to take your work seriously. It shows I'm beginning to run out of jokes. <laughs> Since Rodigia left us, Miss Spalding, Schultz is like in a different world. Jovi, we all feel like we lost a dear friend. A man who was a gentleman. True blue. <laughs> so, a man who was loved by all. 
Olsen, when you talk like that, stop looking six feet down. It makes me nervous. <laughs> well, Alf, I know how you all feel about Mr. Basco leaving us. But remember, it was what he wanted. That's right. If it's good for him, it's good for us. Joe, you're the, the, there's no use to bother him if, he, if he's gotten too big. Too big? What they talk about, I'm small like a cockroach. <laughs> Close the door so that we can start the lesson. With or without Mr. Basco, the class goes on. Mamma mia, I'm a shut out. <laughs> That's my old antique store. And the Pasquale has got a sign in the window. Watch for opening the son of Joseph Babashop. That's a Pasquale, all right. Yeah, he's, he's always a spell of shop with a three P's. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to see him in the restaurant. Uh, hello, Pasquale. Oh. Hey. This is Luigi or is a ghost? <laughs> no, it's me, Pasquale. <laughs> What's happening, Luigi? You going to slumming in the old neighborhood? <laughs> I'm just passing by. I, I thought I would have dropped in and, and say hello. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, they tell me you're making so much money, you're handing out $5 bills as a souvenir. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good, Pasquale. Like I'm a said, though, but... Uh, you got to think a big... I know, if you wanna... I know, I know. Trouble with my business. I think a big, but the spaghetti never stretches more than a six inches. How's it us? Oh, fine, fine. So far this week, she's got a date every night with the same boy. Oh, that's a good. Is it somebody... Uh... Somebody I know, Pasquale? No, no, no. He's some rich millionaire's son. You know, winter's in Hawaii, summer's in Coney Island. <laughs> in Coney Island, yes. huh? Oh, that's a nice... Yeah. He's a promise yeah. to teach you Rosa how to play a water polo, but I told him nothing to do. And I don't like the idea of dragging them poor horses through the water. <laughs> no, I don't either. But, uh, well... Uh, well, I, I'm glad that us is a happy Pasquale. Uh, Pasquale, I, I see you got uh, got a barber shop uh, moving as soon into my old store. Huh? That's all right. Uh, Joe Caravello, he's going to pay me more rent than you used to pay me when you paid me. I'm always paid to you when I'm when I'm had it. But you never had it. I'm a got it now. All right, don't push it in my well, face. Who's it pushing it in your face? You then? are, and I don't like. Well, it. I don't like the name. All right, then excuse me. I gotta go and finish a game. I'm a playing with someone. We're playing canats. Well, you play the canats. I'm gonna go back to my store. I'm gonna get a bigger deal on it. So goodbye. 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 Miss Aubrey, quick, take her the telephone. Uh, yes, sir. Don't call me, sir. My name is Abasco. Quick, call up Pascal again, huh? There's a time of telling me you're calling for some new millionaire, anybody. Tell him, tell him we're going to give him twice as much rent. Right. Oh, all right. And we, we got to stop a joke from moving in a barber shop. Hello, Pasquale Spaghetti Talk, and that's me, Pasquale. Um, uh, Mr. Pasquale, I represent a very wealthy client who's interested in renting a former antique shop at 21 North Halstead Street. Lady, I'm tired of people calling me. The store's already rented. Oh, but we're prepared to pay twice as much, double. No. Mama, may tell him three times as um, much. Go... We'll make it triple. Lady, I don't care if you make it a double, triple, a fourple, or fifple. It's a rented, and that's all. <laughs> Oh, Mama, me, that's no good. What am I going to do? I'm, I'm going to know. How am I going to beg him to take me back? Miss Aubrey, watch you to start a place. Mr. Basco, when will you come back? Never, I hope. <laughs> and I'm going to open the door of his rest and, and, and a soprano. <gasps> yes, Oh, Pasquale. Luigi. Uh, Pasquale, where, where was you going? First, do you tell me where you was going? Well, if, if I'm here, then you know where I was going. What are you trying to do? Make a dope out of me? I'm not a marooner, you know. <laughs> uh, 
inglese, Pasquale. No more fight. Huh? Well, Pasquale, I'm doing very good in my new store, but, but I'm never going to be happy. I'm going to come back here. I want my old store back. I'm going to care if I have to pay ten times more. I, I want it back. Luigi, I got a confession to make. When we just bumped it together, I was out of my way to you. You was... Huh? That's all right, the little banana nose. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you to come back ahead. Yeah, but uh, what about uh, the Baba shop? What about uh, this uh, Joe? Oh, there never was no Joe. I just put up the sign so people shouldn't bother me about renting it. Welcome home, my son. Oh, it's, 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 good, it's good to be back, Papa. Oh, Papa, is Luigi really coming back? Yes, my daughter. That was the end of Luigi, the big American businessman. That night, we, we had a big celebration in the old store, and Horowitz said... Luigi, in behalf of the whole neighborhood, welcome back to civilization. Sure. <laughs> uh, then I found out you were moving back. Then I thought that was too good to be true. Uh, and words just failed me. Ach, ja, and when words fail us... Webster has got to start writing it a new dictionary. <laughs> ah, Luigi, Luigi, you made us all so happy by coming back. For once, Mr. Schultz, you express the sentiments of everybody. So you see, Mamma Mia, why I'm so happy tonight. I've learned something I'm like to tell to everybody. When you got your friends around you, people who like you, you have to start working on your second million of dollars. You already got to your first. Good night, Mamma Mia. I hope you feel good like me. Your loving son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an ideal taste treat to bring home to your family. It's a grand between-meal treat for children, for instance, because it satisfies them without spoiling their appetites. It's good to pass around the table after meals, because chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum freshens the taste, helps cleanse the teeth, and aids digestion. And best of all, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a delicious treat that just about everyone really enjoys. So next time you go to the store, get a few packages of healthful, refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Penny for penny, you can't buy a better taste treat for your family. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conreed as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluster. This is Charles Lyons. This is the CBS Radio Network.